Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range, and I've just been out of the range testing a myth that comes up occasionally online, which is that self-loading firearms are less powerful than bolt-action firearms in the same cartridge with the same barrel length, because a lot of energy is robbed by the gas system or the blowback system or the recoil system in order to cycle the action. Now, there are even people out there who think that this is significant. So, Although this isn't the myth of the century or whatever, I thought, well, there's one way to find out. So what I did was I took my AR-15 and my Sturmgewehr 57 out to the range um, to test it. In each case, with the repeating system switched on and the repeating system switched off. This isn't the only gas-operated firearm I've got which I can switch the gas off from, but I thought it's the most common. The other ones are Chartered Industries of Singapore, SAR-80, uh, rarer. When most people think of a semi-auto firearm, this is the modern sporting rifle for a reason. This particular one has a JP low profile gas block from back in the day, which allows me to choke the gas right off. And in case you're wondering, it's uh, basically, this particular one, it's an Oberland Arms OA-15 that I bought secondhand in the Netherlands and imported it to Switzerland when I came here. And it was my do-everything rifle because in the Netherlands, sports shooters could typically only have five firearms. So this had to do me for both IPSC and what's called Groot Kaliber Geweer, a large caliber rifle. So I could set it up in two different configurations, one for dynamic shooting with conventional sights and one with uh, a match diopter. And I've put the nasty nasty break on it that I uh, used to use for dynamic shooting. For the, for the precision stuff at 100 meters, I would take the break off and shoot it with a plain muzzle. Um, so, this one was easy. The more difficult bit is the Sturmgewehr 57. <laughs> because this is a delayed blowback. However, the grenade launching magazines have a little lever there to block the operation of the, uh, the action. So normally that will cycle. When the grenade launching magazine is placed in, that actually blocks the operation and to cycle a grenade cartridge you have to press that button there and simultaneously run the action. Now what I couldn't do is put ball ammunition in this. It's designed to be too short for ball ammunition for safety reasons so that you don't send a, uh, a live cartridge up the back end of a uh, non-bullet trap rifle grenade. And here is uh, Cursive Dale. Here's my training one. So what I had to do was do lots of onning and offing, cycle out of this magazine uh, manually, put in the white magazine, Shoot, swap them over constantly. Bit of a pain in the backside. Uh, much, much simpler with the AR-15. Now I'll put a link to this file in the description so you can play with it. It's a, it's a Google Sheet. You can. Play with it if you want. So um, AR-15 with the gas on gave us a mean of 3,215 with Frontier bulk brass-cased uh, ammo, and with the gas off, 3,171. A difference of 44 slower. Now there is no mechanical or thermodynamic reason why turning the gas off should cause the bullets to go slower. So this can only be normal statistical variation. Um, so this is 1.4%. I did 10 shots on each so that we were gonna minimize as far as possible uh, without burning up vast quantities of ammunition, minimize the, uh, the statistical variation. But from one set of 10 to the other, not only the mean, but also both the maximum and the minimum ended up being lower as well. So um, I think we can call it, as far as the AR-15 is concerned, busted. For the Stronger Air 57, with the blowback in operation, we had a mean of 2259 feet per second. Blocked, it was 2302. A difference of 43 plus. 
Um, this is 1.9%. I think this is so close that and given that there was 44 difference in the AR15 in the wrong direction, I think we're probably working within uh, the boundaries of the ammunition. This was not GP11, this was uh, Top Shot, which is uh, Franconia's stuff made for them by SB. It is not as good as GP11, it is not as consistent. One thing that is interesting though is that the, extre um, that the uh, extreme spread and the standard deviation with it blocked were much wider. And again, there's no real engineering reason for this um, that I can think of. If you can think of one, please comment. Um, but fundamentally, I think that was probably just the ammunition, but I, I did 10 of each so that we could do a fair comparison. Maybe I'll go back, maybe I'll do it, at a, do it again at a place and time when I can have actual GP11, uh, which should have lower spreads and standard deviations and uh, see if we can repeat it. So I think overall the idea that there's any significant amount of energy taken out of the system is completely busted by this. Um, the question for me was rather with the 57, was there going to be a significant amount of gas leakage because um, with the chamber flutes they deliberately divert gas back around the outside of the cartridge to float it on a layer of gas so that it doesn't grab the chamber wall and then you, you get a you, you get a case head separation as the inside pressure blows the uh, the back end of the case head off. Um, but yeah I think really this has to just be normal statistical variation within the ammunition. The other question for Dale, our Stungberg 57 expert, was whether the blocking lever in the white magazine was going to be up to the task of uh, of taking ball ammunition and the answer was Yes, it was. Um, actually, what this does simply is it blocks the carrier from coming back. And because there's the massive, massive mechanical disadvantage with the rollers, there's a lot less force there than, uh, than trying. <laughs> I mean, you're not trying to lock the breech with this. All you're doing is stopping the carrier. And uh, I think the, 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 uh, the effective gearing ratio on this is like five to one, but it certainly held up better than expected. Now for a lot of people we're settled here because uh, we've seen that there is no measurable effect going on. Now the question for some other people is going to be why not? And the answer is quite simple that there's just such an excess of gas volume and gas pressure that you can divert a bit of it whether it's around the outside of the case and against the, uh, uh, the case head or via a gas system uh, to run the action without measurably impacting the, uh, the amount of pressure acting on the base of the bullet, accelerating it out of the barrel. Uh, the other question is regarding recoil operated systems. And in fact, this you can just work out from Newton's laws by first principles, that if you do conservation of momentum on it, so the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet versus the mass of the recoiling parts multiplied by the velocity of the recoiling parts, and we want to solve for the velocity of the recoiling parts, which I just did it quickly upstairs um, for 30 M2 ball, so 150 grain bullet at um, 2,800 feet per second, and assuming two kilograms of moving metal, gives us um, a recoil velocity due to the bullet of um, about 13 feet per second, which is falling well within the variation. You're gonna to struggle to measure 13 feet per second in 2,800 feet per second, given the statistical variation of um, the velocities anyway. So, there you go. Hopefully, we've put this one to rest for anyone who might care. So if you're ever in a pointless discussion on some cesspit of mostly ignorance like Quora, people who follow uh, CN Arsenal's um, Discord might know that I have a bit of a sad on for Quora. But anyway, um, there you go. You can, you can reference this video now to solve arguments by people against people who think that this has any meaningful effect. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, please check the notification bell is illuminated so that you see our videos when they're posted. And uh, thank you so much to our patrons who paid for all the ammunition that went down range to do this video. If you haven't become a patron yet, please consider doing so because it really helps us uh, keep the channel chugging along. And uh, see you again sometime. Bye.